Hello everybody, this is The Coding Nurse. Um, I want to thank you for clicking on the channel. This video is going to talk about the role of medical coding in data analytics, in particular, healthcare data analytics. Um, on my channel before, I've talked about the nurse's role in auditing. I've talked about the nurse's role in clinical documentation and how coding, how your knowledge of nursing and how you're, you're, once you learn medical coding, how you can use that knowledge to apply it into auditing and also into clinical documentation. This video is going to talk about medical coding in general. Anybody who is in medical coding, uh, I'm gonna talk how you can transition into data analytics. Um, with all that's going on in healthcare, with all that's going on with technology, um, medical coding is getting more and more specific. So you're going to have to ultimately pick a lane and, and um, decide a career path. And the current career paths, in my opinion, and for what I can see, are auditing, clinical documentation, and data analytics. Um, risk adjustment is part of that, but risk adjustment, you also do auditing and clinical documentation and healthcare data analytics in risk adjustment. That's just a type of, of payee system. But, um, and it's all, that's, it's combined, but it's a little different. But ultimately, the three main tracks, in my opinion, are gonna be auditing, clinical documentation, and healthcare data analytics. I've already talked about the first two, but now I wanna talk about healthcare data analytics. As we know, in healthcare, you, there are tons and tons and tons of data that's generated on a daily basis. Every time a doctor, sees a patient, whether it's inpatient, whether it's outpatient, all of that clinical information gets reduced into codes. We know that that's, where, that's why we have medical coding. But what happens to the information in addition to that is where the opportunity is for people who are really, who are medical coders and who are interested in getting into medical coding. It is a huge opportunity. Once that information is obtained by your insured by the, the by the health plan by the auditing company they have access to so much information so what data what data analytics is is literally data analysis they take all of that information and they translate it into basic basically workable documents um, the most common way I could probably explain it to you would be like an Excel spreadsheet where they could find out once with all their information, with all the access to all of the, the patient data, they can find out what their top five um, medical diagnoses are, what, what are the top five conditions that their members have, how often or how prevalent is, you know, let's just say hypertension, let's just say how prevalent is diabetes, how prevalent is um, something that's... GERD. Um, you could also find out how many people have had a colonoscopy in the last five years. What is the rate of increase in colonoscopy screening year to year? All that is information that we as coders already uh, abstract from medical records. And we just put it in our in, in the program, in the proprietary software for our employers, and that's it. But someone else on the back end generates all of that they compile that information, they put it into a report that gets looked at by the higher-ups in uh, the health plan and that decides how they allocate money, where they allocate money, um, if they need to start allocating more money, outreach, it, it determines a lot of things. And it's a huge missed opportunity for people who are in medical coding and already know medical coding because the people who go on to compile that information and go on to present it have no knowledge of coding. How I found out about this, I'll tell you a quick little story. Um, I had a job in I guess 2019, last year, seems so long ago, last year where I was in training. I was learning an EMR system. The person who was training me in the EMR system was not a coder, but she had some kind of health information something credential, but she wasn't a coder. So I ended, she asked me how to how could she find out how many people in their health plan were on dialysis? So what she said was, um, 
the management wants me to generate a report to, de to determine how many people on, you know, in, our, in our health plan are on dialysis. How would I do that? So me being a coder, I, I told her instantly, I said, it's easy. All you have to do is when someone is on dialysis, they have a dialysis status code. What, so she said, well, do you know what the code is? I said, sure, it's Z99.2. So I told her, I said, but you also want to run a couple other um, chronic kidney disease. You want to do, you want to do in stage renal and maybe um, chronic kidney disease stage five. You want to put in those two codes just to kind of see because everybody who was in stage should be on dialysis, but everybody that is on dialysis will not be in will not be in stage. So that's how you can kind of do a checks and balance. So I gave her the three codes. Z99.2 for dialysis status, N18.6 for end stage renal disease, and N18.5 for chronic kidney disease stage 5. Literally in five minutes, she had a she had a report. It was in a spreadsheet. She, you know, it and it wasn't anything she did no programming. This was all done by by a program that they already used. All she had to do was just put in, she went to the data, a data analysis section, she put in the, these codes in a in a search, it came up. She you know had it um, be transported into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, she cleaned up the spreadsheet a little, and did a did a pivot table, basically, and it was done in literally five like six minutes. It was completely done. Now, if I wasn't there to give her that, that information, it would have taken her longer to get the information. But I gave her the information. Basically, I did her work for her. But she gets to compile the support, make it nice, you know, put a little, uh, fancy it up a little, and then gets to present it like she knows. And I'm telling you, this is starting to be a trend because I have had, I had interviews. Matter of fact, I had an interview earlier this year. I really would have liked this job, but they are starting to have, since data analysis is such a big deal now and it's going to be even bigger. They are starting to put data analysts in charge of coders. Crazy. I had an interview. I had like three interviews. I interviewed with this company and my manager was going to be, he was a data analyst for 10 years. Okay, that's great for you. But you know nothing about coding. Why are you supervising coders? And it just, it's, it just goes to show you just almost how little respect they have for the skill, but they need the skill. The skill is what runs healthcare. Nobody will get paid if it wasn't for coders because codes have to be, the diseases, procedures have to be translated into codes to be submitted by, for payment. That's the law. So they discount the ability for someone to be able to, um, to be able to communicate that information effectively. So I said all that to say, and the whole purpose of this video is, if you are a coder and you learn what they call a business intelligence tool, you don't even have to know how to, how to program SQL in any, uh, anymore because before you used to have to program in SQL, which is like structured query language, where you had to basically just create a series of steps, which is not really complicated. You have to create a step, a few lines of code that would have gone and abstracted the same information and now, you can put into a business intelligence search tool. So it's, it's, it's becoming really, really simple and it's a huge opportunity because if you are a coder and you know coding and you also know a business intelligence um, tool such as Tableau, such as Power BI, such as IBM Cognos, those are like the major players and might be one of them that I'm forgetting. I'm currently studying for my Tableau certification. I'll take my, my exam schedule for next month. So with that information, you will become so much more marketable, so much more valuable because that person that has that data analyst that abstracts the information, all they can do is just present it. Like they can, they can just tell you just how many people there are, but they don't know how that will impact um, patient care. They don't know how they could improve that. Like they wouldn't know what you can do. So they they would have to bring in other people into the discussion Whereas you, being a coder, you having a healthcare background, you would all you would automatically know that okay, if you have this many people who are on dialysis, there would be then you could also you could do a little uh, do some more research to find out how many people you have who who have chronic kidney disease. 
you could also do you could also start some kind of program where the where when they are come, where they come in for screening they could be screened you might have to check their labs more you could do a little more patient education have the providers do more patient education or have have a nurse do more patient education to help people from keeping their their chronic kidney disease from advancing which is going to always cost more money which is going to cost the health plan more money so if you can save people money on the on the front end they will love you for it that will make you that will make you marketable that will give you a six figure salary but a regular data analyst will not know that but you being a nurse you being a coder whether you're a coder or a nurse once you get into coding you're a coder once you know that information and you and you learn a power business a, a, a power bi business intelligence tool you can write your own paycheck that is the trend that is what i mean i have i've had two jobs that i have turned down because they had people who were not coders in charge of coders that is ridiculous that that is an insult but it's going to be a trend so if we have so the more coders we have that have more skills the more coders we have that can do that can transition into other areas the more we can impact the industry positively because you have other people who are in these rooms making decisions based off of our work based off of our knowledge they don't know about combination codes they don't know about causal relationships but we do so that's what that's the information that that's the knowledge and the skill set that we would bring into a, a discussion about money but you have to be in the room to have a discussion and how you get in the room is you have to you have to be able to create a report that they can understand then you break it down and then you explain it to them more so I just really encourage anybody if you are remotely interested in data analytics healthcare data analytics I strongly suggest that you look into Tableau T A B L E A U dot com go to Tableau but Power BI I think that's by Microsoft um, Power BI and IBM Cognos C O G N O S I'm going to put the uh, the information in the description box but I just think that data analytics is a huge, huge opportunity for coders, and I, I say get in on the ground floor now because it is really, really, really becoming big, and in a couple of years, they're going to start having all kinds of requirements for you to do it, and they're going to have you jumping through hoops because there are going to be too many people that basically you're going to be taking the show from other people, and they're not going to like it. So get in while you can, make, make, your, make your inroads while you can, pull somebody else in while you can, because that's what I intend to do, and... Just go and make it and make yourself marketable because in this day and age, right now with COVID, I mean, which we're going to be facing this for a for a while. Even once the vaccine comes out, it's still going to be a while before everybody takes it, if they take it, and all that. So people are going to be working remotely for a while. And if you want, you want to have as many skills as you possibly can. You want to be as marketable as you can. And Power and healthcare data analytics is something else that you can do from your home. All you have to do is go to nd.com and put in healthcare data analytics and look at the requirements. You will see that they want you to have knowledge of ICD 10 CM, um, CPT, PCS. They're going to want you to know some kind of power intelligence, some kind of business intelligence tool. They're not going to require you to be a coder because they they don't because they don't have it. They barely have enough coders to code now. So they don't have coders who have already transitioned into the data uh, data and, um, analytics role. But as more coders start to transition into it, those positions, I believe, are going to start to require a coding certification, and they should, because you're going to find right now you have data analytics. The, the, the data analysts did their thing over there. Coders did their thing over here. But now, because of, of healthcare data and, um, analytics, they are combining. Get in while you can. I'm telling you. Get in on the ground floor. Now is the time. If you don't, if you have not learned medical coding, I have a website, thecodingnurse.com. I have information on how you can learn ICD-10, CM, and PCS, and CPT. I teach all. I teach those two courses. You can get what you. I can help you get where you gotta go because I'm telling you, I'm taking my my uh, Tableau Desktop Specialist exam um, next month, and I'm gonna try to make it do what it do. And I'm trying to pass on the information. I'm trying to hit people as as early as I can. I'm trying to be as truthful. I'm trying to be as direct as I possibly can. Healthcare data analytics is going to be the field to get into. 
in, in addition to auditing and clinical documentation, that's not ever going to change. That's never going to go anywhere. It's only going to get bigger as these health plans start to require more and more uh, oversight about money, where it's going, how it's being allocated, and um, especially, I mean, because I've already seen where now um, CMS is starting to audit um, telehealth visits and telemedicine visits. So that's a huge opportunity for auditing, a huge opportunity for clinical documentation, and also a huge um, opportunity for, for healthcare data and analytics because you can run a report to find out just how many, um, how many telehealth visits your health plan had in this month versus this month. You can start, you can see a trend and it's all software based. If you want to learn SQL, it still is good to know. It's not a necessity, but if you learn a business intelligence tool like the three, the main three that I mentioned, you'll be good once you learn coding. I mean, you have to, like the whole crux to this is knowing coding and then you combine your business intelligence tool um, knowledge and skill set with your coding. That's the magic bullet, the combination of the two. So I'm telling you, get in while you can, um, do your research, um, and if you have any questions, as always, um, just reach out, go to my website, send me an inquiry, and I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I wish you all the best. Bye.